Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's live webinar presented by CyberLink and Leeling. We all know that facial recognition has been the most popular application in the past five years, especially in the IoT applications. And among all the application, uh, security and surveillance is uh, the part, the, the, the category which uh, gets uh, most value and most deployment. So today we are very happy uh, to invite uh, both Leading and CyberLink to introduce our solutions and uh, let you guys know that how we enable facial recognition on IoT and AIoT applications, especially in the security scenarios. So before we start, uh, I would like to go through today's agenda. So today's agenda will be in three parts. The first part will be uh, CyberLink uh, presenting our facial recognition solution. We are having a facial recognition engine called FaceMe. So we will give you a walkthrough of uh, what it is and how it works and how we help uh, IoT uh, applications to enable facial recognition in different uh, scenarios. And the second part will be presented by Liling to talk about uh, Liling's uh, security and surveillance solutions, as well as how they utilize CyberLink's facial recognition uh, technology in their solutions. And the last part, we'll have five minutes of uh, live Q&A so that you can raise your questions. So right now, you're using CyberLink's U webinar to watch the live cast. So in your right-hand side, you can see a chat window where uh, if you're having any questions, you can uh, raise your questions there. And we are having the online supporters from both CyberLink and Leading to answer you online. And we will also pick the top questions uh, at the Q&A section uh, to get your uh, questions answered. So uh, first of all, I would like to introduce uh, the speakers of today. So myself, I'm Steven. I'm the marketing director of CyberLink. And today, I'm also having Michael, who is a product manager for FaceMe Product Line. So he will join us in the live Q&A session. Hello, Michael. Hi, everyone. I'm Michael from Product Management Department. So I'm in charge of the uh, product planning for the FaceMe product lines. OK, thank you, Michael. And next, we will introduce uh, Liling's product manager, Alun. Hello, Alun. Hi, everyone. My name is Alun. I'm from Liling, Taiwan. Nice to meet you. And I'm in charge of uh, product manager for Liling, Taiwan. OK, thank you, Alun. All right, so let's start. Uh, today's live webinar. So the first part, uh, I will give you an introduction of uh, CyberLink's FaceMe facial recognition technology. Okay, so uh, before we start, I want to give you a quick introduction of uh, who we are. So we are from CyberLink, and our company is founded in 1996, and we are having our, our headquarter uh, in Taipei in Taiwan, and also we are having branches in the uh, US, in Japan, and uh, Europe. And most people know us as the PowerDVD company. I think uh, all of you, if you're a PC user, you're more or less using PowerDVD in the past or are still using right now. Additionally, we're also having PowerDirector, which is the video editing software that uh, help users to create cool videos on either a Windows PC or smartphones. And also, we are uh, having the unified communication solution, which is called U. So we are having uh, U Meeting, which is a video meeting service, and U Webinar is a live casting service uh, for corporates to host webinars. So uh, right now, we are using U Webinar to do the live cast. And uh, last part is that uh, Face Me. So we are also uh, the uh, very experienced in the AI technology. So Face Me is uh, the, the 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 new product in our product lineup that we are one of the best uh, facial recognition engine uh, in the world. So face me in a glance that uh, it's highly accurate. So we are providing 99.7% of accuracy rate uh, in different scenarios. And additionally, it's been optimized for uh, different platforms and operation systems. So it can be uh, Windows, Android, iOS, or uh, Linux, and we're supporting many different uh, distributions of Linux, like uh, Ubuntu, Red Hat, uh, Sun OS, et cetera. And lastly, that uh, when we're talking about uh, facial recognition today, most of the deployment we're saying uh, either it's a uh, cloud connected or it's uh, running on the edge. So our engine uh, is designed to serve uh, the needs for both uh, edge devices and uh, the server deployment. So it uh, will depend on that how users using our engine to deploy 
So it can be a hybrid uh, architecture, like some of the facial recognition and extraction at the edge device part. While in the cloud server, there's a huge uh, people database uh, to map the faces, to match the faces. Okay, and uh, when we're talking about that, we are one of the best uh, facial recognition in the world. So that, uh, me share, let me share with you this uh, number. So this is a benchmark from uh, NIST, National uh, Institute of Standard and Technology in US. So this is the uh, most credible and most important uh, facial recognition benchmark and contest among the world. So in the latest, um, in the latest benchmark report uh, released by May 2020, uh, 2020 that, that uh, sampling face means number is actually quite good. Uh, there are several different categories. The first one is called VISA. So VISA uh, meaning that your face is uh, staring right to the camera, like uh, on your VISA or on your ID card, that kind of photo. So the recognition rate we can reach to 99.7%. And the first one, uh, the second one is a visa in the uh, in in one by uh, in in one by uh, one million uh, the 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 false uh, uh, false recognition rate that, that we are also reaching a ninety eight point ninety five percent. And the last one we are seeing here is called wild test. So wild test is another uh, extreme case that uh, usually uh, the image of uh, faces are captured from uh, surveillance cameras that uh, it comes with uh, many different, um, like a different type of situation, like the faces being covered, et cetera. So uh, in the wild test, we can reach to 96.88% uh, of uh, accuracy rate. So uh, among all the vendors on the NIST um, FRVT facial recognition vendor test uh, competition that we are ranked uh, as number 16 globally, and when excluding uh, Chinese or Russian vendors, we're ranked as a top number five in the world. So that's um, meaning that our facial recognition is, uh, is really good uh, in the, the rate of our recognition. So here, let me uh, share with you one quick example why is uh, NIST uh, wild test is very important. So at the left, uh, top left side, you can see the visa photo. So it's like uh, the photo on your ID card while uh, the wild photo meaning that is captured randomly uh, from the surveillance camera. So in the wild photo, there are several different uh, situations like their faces might be uh, partially being covered or their faces are, are in uh, extreme facial poses like a head down. And additionally, some of the photos or some of the video might be captured in a poor lighting condition or with uh, very strong uh, backlighting. So that kind of test is very extreme uh, in the facial recognition test. So as you can see that in the wild test number, we are still having a 96.88% of accuracy rate. That meaning is very valuable for the surveillance type of applications. And the Cyberlink Face Me uh, facial recognition engine comes with the uh, following six major features. So the first one is called a face detection meaning uh, a person walk into a camera, then our AI engine can recognize it's a person. And secondly, it's, uh, second, it's uh, the face recognition. So when you walk into the camera, the AI engine will extract uh, your facial template, meaning uh, how AI think you look like. So this uh, facial template is a digitized number that uh, is non-reversible back to the photo. But with this facial num uh, and with this uh, facial uh, template number that it can map with, like for example, uh, one million faces in the database, and match which one is uh, most close to uh, the person uh, standing in front of the camera, and uh, verify its identity. So that's the logic of how facial recognition works. And thirdly, it's called facial attributes. So uh, our face me engine can uh, extract several different facial attributes like age. Uh, gender or emotions, for example, uh, we, the, the engine can tell if a person is happy or sad or angry or surprised. And the fourth part is called image processing. So uh, as I explained earlier, that Cyberlink, we are the expert, uh, very, very experienced uh, in the uh, multimedia technology. So uh, this is a technology from our Power TV product online, which is called True Theater. It's helping uh, to do image pre-processing, like uh, increasing the resolution or remove the noise and backlighting on an image. So uh, the, the video being recognized will be pre-processed by the True Theater engine, which can enhance uh, the accuracy rate by yet another 11.65%, uh, which is pretty nice. And the fifth part is called anti-spoofing. So we know that uh, 
right now there are many people trying to use uh, like photos or video of uh, people to attack the facial recognition system. So uh, FaceMe engine provides two methodologies. One is called 3D anti-spoofing, which is using a 3D depth sensing camera to verify if it's a real or fake person. And secondly, is that we are supporting the 2D camera that even using a 2D camera without the depth information, we can using AI, we can use AI technology to um, recognize whether it's a real or fake person. And last part uh, is very important, especially for today, uh, when uh, the world is under the threat of uh, COVID-19. So in most public spaces, we need to wear masks to enter a public space. So uh, our engine had uh, recently updated the feature called the mask detection to detect whether a person is wearing a mask or not. And additionally, that uh, wearing mask is always creating problem for facial recognition because there's not sufficient uh, facial features for the engine to recognize. So we are having the, the facial recognition engine face me being chained with additional uh, uh, photos and videos with mask so that it can recognize a person even when wearing mask and the accuracy rate is actually quite good that we can provide up to 95 percent of accuracy rate when people is wearing a mask so next i'll share with you a quick uh, example of uh, what face me sdk can do so in this demo video you'll see um that when the camera recognizes a person walking to the camera, then it will mark the face part, means uh, it detects a face. Then I can tag this person uh, with a name, so it's the, the person's first visit. And a few minutes later, the person walking again, then I can recognize it's the second visit. Okay, and additionally, we can also do things like extract the uh, genders and the age, and verify uh, what's their facial expression, whether they are sad or they are angry or they are surprised. Okay, so this kind of uh, application can be used in scenarios like uh, in the retail space. We can know that uh, who are the people walking to my retail shop, what's their age, what's the gender attribution, and how they feel overall uh, in my store. And next is the medical mass detection and the temperature check part. So, uh, we recently uh, released a new feature uh, in our S FaceMe SDK, which contains a uh, three part. The first part is uh, detect whether a person is wearing a mask or not. And the second part is that when wearing a mask, it can still recognize the faces. And the third part is uh, integration with a thermal camera so that it can, it can provide the uh, temperature information when a person is uh, sending in front of a thermal camera. So let's take a look at the demo video. Okay, so first uh, it's a mask detection part. So you can see when wearing a mask, face me will show it's wearing a mask. And when you are uh, not wearing a mask, then face me engine will recognize it's not no, it's no mask, it's not wearing mask. And what about you are not wearing properly, like your nose is leaked? then you will show it's a mass NG, it's not good. It's a, not the proper uh, condition. And the engine can recognize like multiple phases uh, within one uh, camera stream at the same time. And additionally, we can uh, detect the phases with mass in different uh, demographic. And uh, we can recognize different uh, texture of mass, like uh, it can be a 95, it can be medical mass or, or cloth masks. And you can also recognize masks uh, from different angles. So that's uh, the, uh, the mask detection capability in FaceMe. And next we'll see uh, the facial recognition with mask. So you can recognize it's me when I'm not wearing mask, but what if I'm uh, having my uh, facial mask on, it can still recognize uh, that's me. So that uh, can help facilitating uh, some scenario, like for example, in the door security scenario that even when wearing masks, uh, you can recognize a person. So the typical cases can be like in uh, many public spaces, like right now in the hospitals, restaurants, or uh, in the schools. When you're entering uh, the building, you still need to wear a mask. And uh, it causes that uh, many of the facial recognition system nowadays not working properly because uh, it cannot recognize a person 
when putting on the mask. So our uh, face me engine can help uh, enable the capability that even when you're wearing masks, we can provide up to 95% of uh, recognition rate uh, when wearing mask. Okay, and as we mentioned earlier that uh, FaceMe is uh, provided in the form of SDK software development kit. So in terms of uh, uh, CPU, GPU, or uh, the IoT platform, we can, uh, we can support a very wide range of uh, OSs and different platforms. Like OS, for example, we explained that it can support Windows, Linux, uh, Android, NVIDIA, Jetpack, and iOS. And in terms of an inference engine, inference engine the way to help you, uh, your devices or your chip uh, to better processing uh, the AI computing. So we are supporting OpenVINO from Intel, and we're supporting TensorFlow uh, and supporting TensorRT from um, NVIDIA, and we're also supporting machine, uh, machine ML, a uh, core ML from uh, Apple. And for the CPU, GPU, and VPU, and even uh, IoT platform, you can see here's a wide range of uh, uh, different chipset we're, we're supporting. So it can up to like a high-end CPU like Intel Xeon processor or Core i processor or all the way down to uh, Intel Core i3 or Intel Celeron. And additionally, we're also supporting like uh, Intel uh, Movidius uh, vision uh, processing unit or supporting ARM CPUs or supporting uh, Apple's uh, A11 or, or newer CPUs. And additionally, a lot of uh, AI uh, devices today are using NVIDIA's technology. It can be a GPU, like the GeForce GPUs, uh, to process the AI computing, or it can be the JSON, uh, the IoT board, which uh, we are supporting both. And lastly, we can also work with uh, like lightweight IoT devices like uh, Raspberry Pi. So here you can see, uh, with all this combination, actually, uh, we can have our engine runs on a wide range of uh, edge devices, all the way up from embedded system, industrial computers, servers, and to VMSs, or all the way down to like lightweight devices, like a door security device, kiosk, uh, post, or digital signages. Okay, so that's uh, what uh, our facial recognition face me engine supports. And we take a deeper look into uh, the SDK architecture. So you can see the uh, bottom part is that what we are providing in our SDK, like uh, we are uh, allowing you to uh, input your video and doing image processing and doing 2D, 3D anti-spoofing. And in the SDK itself, it can detect a face or extract uh, the face template or manage the face tem template database. And you can perform the one by one uh, face match or one by n uh, face search in a huge database. And in terms of customer side, that, that for example, like leading is our customer, and their solutions are from like IP cams to uh, NVR and to VMS software. So they can use our engine to integrate in either their VMS software or in their NVR devices, or even some uh, of the smart IP cameras that as long as uh, the CPU is uh, supported, that we can integrate uh, the facial recognition technology easily uh, in our customers' solutions. And in terms of model size, meaning that uh, we are providing FaceMe in three different models. So the highest one is called the UH. It's an ultra, ultra high precision one. And to keep it simple, this one, this model need uh, a GPU to process, like for example, NVIDIA GPUs or Intel Movidius VPUs. And the model size is larger at uh, 250 megabyte. And uh, the recognition rate you can see is higher that under uh, one by uh, one, uh, one by 10,000 uh, 10, of uh, uh, false accuracy rate that we can provide the true acceptance rate at the 99%. And uh, the middle one is called uh, VH, meaning uh, it can run some purely uh, CPU, like for example, on a regular PC or a premium higher end of mobile devices. And the model size is smaller at uh, 70 mega. And uh, you can see the benefit is that the smaller model size, but uh, the accuracy rate is uh, closer to the UH model. And the third one is called the edge model, the high precision model that is running on the lightweight uh, uh, IoT devices. And uh, the model size is the smallest, while we are um, sacrificing a little bit uh, on the recognition rate and the use case for the edge model is more suitable for the cases like, for example, the uh, door security device. You're using faces to unlock your door so that uh, in the case your face is staring at the camera. 
not in a street in an extreme uh, angle. So in terms of the model we are working with leading, they are using the UH model, which uh, on their NVR devices, there is a, there are a NVIDIA GPU, which can provide very powerful uh, AI processing on their devices. And lastly, uh, I'll go through a few um, IoT use cases. So uh, you can see that right now, uh, we are hearing facial recognition everywhere. Uh, in the security applications, we can use it for time and attendance in company and use it as uh, access control, or uh, even in a pharmacy, we can use that to, um, to, to get our medicines. And the second one is in public safety area that the police person can use uh, facial recognition to identify a person on the street. Of course, uh, under the law enforcement authority, they, they can do this. And you can also use to uh, do things like a, a, a entry a country in, in, the clear, uh, in the clearance or at the border of an airport. And the third one is uh, smart retail. So in the retail store, like in shopping malls, that you can use facial recognition to identify that um, who are the people walking to my store. And additionally, you can use, it can also be used in some use cases like uh, transaction authentication or the member uh, recognition in the retail shops. And lastly, it's in the banking area that you can use uh, to identify the identity and to, to authorize a person to do things like uh, transacting money or using some other uh, banking services. So this is the face me uh, use cases in IoT. Okay, and the next part, uh, we would also like to take this chance uh, to introduce another new solution that actually uh, this is the first time we introduce publicly because this product face me health, uh, we are launching next week uh, globally and we're taking this chance to introduce to you uh, the new solution. So we know that uh, right now uh, in the COVID-19 era that, that uh, we, are, we need to wear masks. We need to measure our body temperature when entering a building. And so wearing a mask is a, a creating problem uh, for facial recognition part. So for Cyberlink, we want to provide an all-in-one solution which can help uh, uh, different locations or deplo different deployment to enable uh, this type of uh, touchless um, biometric identification uh, to, to for, for pandemic control in, in this uh, special time of the year. So here's a glance of uh, Face Me Health's UI. So you can see it's very clear that when uh, it's usually being setting up at the health checkpoint at the entrance of the building. So on the UI, you can see it's measuring the forehead temperature and also showing whether um, whether uh, the mask uh, is properly weared uh, on the person's face. So in the right side, you can see the first uh, thing shows is the identity, identity of this person. And the second one is that whether uh, the person is wearing mask or not. And third uh, is the temperature, the forehead temperature of this person. Okay, so you can see this setup that it's being setting uh, at the entrance of a building and helping the security person uh, to identify these uh, major parameters. So uh, right now in most of the buildings, when we need to set up this kind of uh, health check uh, station or health check point, that we are having the security person to use the shotgun type of uh, temperature measurement to, to check everyone's uh, head, uh, forehead temperature manually. Or some of the deployment is using thermal camera, but uh, the, the security guy need to stare at the, 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 the monitor for whole day to notify that whether they are uh, the, red, the red part uh, in the people's forehead. So this is uh, time consuming and uh, labor intensive as well as like uh, it's uh, still having some risk uh, for contacting in uh, under COVID-19. So we are providing this kind of uh, seamless flow that everything can be done automatically uh, with machine, uh, we say machine imaging but a computer vision and AI technology to identify uh, the mask wearing status uh, and identif identity verification and uh, sense the temperature. And in addition that uh, our entire system also integrate with our incident alert system, which is called U, that uh, when we are notifying like some person doesn't wear a mask or some person with a higher uh, forehead temperature, then you will send an instant messenger alert uh, to the security person so they can uh, get informed that, that this is a person you need to be aware of. So here's a demo video uh, for this uh, entire system. 
there's a identity and the mass wearing status and the temperature information. Okay, so when you're wearing mask, that it shows wearing mask or it's not wearing properly, they can all be uh, detected. So let's do a cross check of uh, temperature sensing data. You can see it's the same around uh, 37 uh, Celsius degrees. Okay, so one of the benefits for our facial recognition engine is that uh, the face mist uh, health is that it's uh, measuring the forehead temperature. So we, you can see in the video, we're using a cup of hot water to test and it's showing very high temperature. So it's not measuring the body temperature, it's actually measuring the, the temperature for the forehead side, uh, which is uh, the, the most common way to check a person's temperature. All right, and the entire setup for this system, we are requiring uh, two cameras. One is a regular 2D uh, webcam and the other one is a thermal camera. So right now we're supporting um, the FLIR C3 thermal camera. So both of these cameras are connected to a computer which runs a core uh, eighth generation of core i3 processor. So you can see the system requirement itself is actually, is actually quite low. And with this two camera, they can do things like a facial recognition or check the temperature. And the walking distance is around a uh, health meter to uh, 70 centimeters, uh, 50 to 70 uh, centimeters. And uh, face me health, uh, this kind of uh, application can be used in different uh, places like in uh, workplaces or in uh, hospitals, in retail shops, in industrial sites, or even using in factories. All right, so uh, that's all for the first part of our presentation. And if you're interested in uh, Cyberlink's FaceMe solution, you can go to our website at www.cyberlink.com slash FaceMe or contact our self, uh, sales representative uh, uh, in different regions. And additionally, uh, we're encouraging you to follow our LinkedIn page so that we'll keep you informed of our latest events online. Right, so that's the first part of uh, the presentation. And next, uh, we will welcome Alun from Liling for the next part of the presentation. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Alun I'm from Lilin, Taiwan. Uh, first, I would like to uh, thank you, uh, Cyberlink, to give us opportunity uh, as a customer, as a partnership, uh, to present you uh, Lilin solution. So I will go from, through from very quick uh, introduction about the company profile, and then introduce you how we can use the facial capabilities, uh, rec facial recognition capabilities into our solution. So Lilin Taiwan is a Taiwanese company. So we are a global manufacturer of uh, IP video camera, recording devices such as NVR and uh, PC-based server. And we also do uh, software uh, development like cloud management. Uh, our main office is in the uh, Taiwan Uku area. And we have a 10 branch office uh, worldwide, including USA, UK, Australia. So we are able to service worldwide customer. So we are in founded in uh, 1980. So this year we celebrate 40th anniversary. So happy birthday, Lily. So we are having 380 employees. We have more than 10,000 customers. So, and we do a lot of uh, partnership with uh, integrator, system integrator and uh, SI and big installer. So this is a big business in uh, Lily core. And our company is uh, comply with the ISO 9001 uh, 2008, so regarding the company factory, because we receive a lot of company that come into our company to do some auditing. So this part we comply for this. And we also have uh, NDA compliance for the US markets, which uh, require not to use uh, any the com component from China. So all this part we, we comply uh, straightfully. And we have a very low deficit rate. This is something very important for our customer to make sure that when they work with Lelin, they make sure that the, the defective rate is very, very low. And we're also very concerned about cybersecurity because people now, they know that any camera is subject to hacking. So Lelin takes it very seriously. And we make sure that uh, all the tools are used to make sure that we sell Lelin camera to you Nobody will be able to see what you have in your house. So cybersecurity, it, 
very big part in Lilium development. So this is a introduction. We have a starting from camera. So we have a full range of uh, IP cameras starting from two megapixel until 12 megapixel. Uh, we're using Sony Starvis for its very good low sensor capabilities. We also have a range of products that are NEMA 4X. What is NEMA? NEMA is, is kind of certification for anti-corrosion, which means if this camera is uh, installed in the seaside, so if it's very salty area, this camera can resist against this corrosion. And we also have NVR uh, solution. So from four channel to 32 channel, we have a full range of uh, uh, NVR to satisfy our customers. We have a lot of interesting function. We we'll support OnVIF and RTSP streaming. We also su support P2P function. And we also support SDK because we have a lot of part of customer, they are integrator. So they're using our system to integrate and make their own software or interface. And we also develop our own VMS software. So we have um, around 80 R&D engineer which are developing software and hardware. So we are able to uh, accept different kind of video source, not only IP camera, we can accept any kind of source. So it's very good because we can make a system very compatible with uh, existing devices like a capture card or uh, other brand uh, camera which are on with compliant. So this is the video source. And the, the good part is we are able to uh, using uh, different kind of alarm and also using IO control. So with this combination, we are able to customize different kind of alert according to the scenario. And we also have access control. So access control is a, a, a another uh, BU that has been created and we support a web-based interface. So this access control are, are merged and integrated with our Lilin VMS. So we can do security and access control solution. And this is uh, our development is called AIDA. So it's the uh, AI capabilities. So in the AI capabilities, we have many functions such as traffic management, uh, social distance, and for the facial recognition, we are using uh, Cyberlink engine capabilities for this part. And beside all the rest is developed by Lilin itself. So it's very big part of the business like uh, city management, traffic, and also illegal uh, parking or space counting. So this is some application I would like to introduce you because people, they, they only remember exact or practical example. So this is first example we call it smart health. So we are able to provide a temperature measurement solution using camera, dual lens camera, and uh, we can able to provide mass detection using our AI capabilities. And we're also able to provide social distance uh, capabilities. So in the premise area, if uh, you don't respect the social distance, then we can generate alert. This is especially the case in Europe country. I'm from France. I know French people never listen to the rules. Tell them to respect 1.5 meter distance. They will not never understand. So I'll tell you the truth. So some, in some countries, you need to use social distance application and then they have nothing to say. They just listen and after they just uh, respect the rules. And also a smart city. This is a big uh, growing part because many countries face the issue of traffic issue. Uh, like uh, Jakarta, like uh, so many countries, the traffic is, is terrible. Unless you are very patient, but I'm not patient. Something I'm stuck in the traffic for three hours, I can do better things. I can go to sightseeing, but stuck in the traffic is a big issue. So, and also it, because it's not eco-friendly, you know, all the gas generated by this. So. Smart city is a big part of living development. So we are able to provide license plate recognition, traffic violations solution, like illegal parking. How many times I've seen in the, we are in Taipei and many cars, they borrow the bus station just to uh, send their kids to the kindergarten and they're lazy to go to the parking. But this can generate accident between bus and car. So we are, provide that kind of solution to increase safety for everybody. So this is what kind of example. And also parking space counting, because now in many countries, space is very limited. So how to eff efficiently uh, solve this 
uh, parking counting. So this is one part of AI development. And another field is about uh, smart hotel. Now hotel is more, tends to be more and more digital. Before you have the paper, you have to sign with paper. But now people nowadays go digital. So everything is, we try to use the digital way to, to register, like for example, before you go take a breakfast, we have to provide a voucher. Now we can use our system to generate a QR code, which is generated to your smartphone. So when you present the smartphone QR code to the entrance, then it knows that you are the guest of this hotel and you're able to enter the dining room. So this is an example of free paper solution. And in addition of this, smart hotel includes parking guidance. How to make it a hotel five class? It's not because you have a guard at the entrance. This is not something. But when you enter your car, recognize you and guide you to say, okay, Mr. Lee, please park to this place number. So this is something more professional. And also factory, because Taiwan has a lot of factory. Uh, we do have our own factory. So how to manage factory part, especially the employee flow. So we're able to provide gate control automation, LED display integration, so I can display on the LED display information such as uh, car number, uh, car owner, and I can guide the people to say, okay, where you have to park. And in addition to this, we are able to provide access control solution. So I know that this, car, this guy can park in this place and can enter a specific time. So now I'd like to introduce you about how we, we work with Cyberlink about the facial recognition system into some practical example. So you can have an understanding of what you can do and what you can propose to your customer. So this is a diagram to explain you all the different parts into the Lilin ecosystem that interact with the facial recognition by Cyberlink. So we are able to uh, use uh, IO controller, uh, IP camera from Lilin, of course, SIP phone, LED display, access control, and also we can able to control like physical door lock using digital output from the camera. And we also have our own APP for the smartphone. So we can then do like kind of two-way audio for interaction. So this is a, a leading VMS software interface to show you how to uh, add the people face. We design software to make it user-friendly because I know so many installer, they never read user manual. I'm not saying they're lazy. I'm just saying time is, time is money. So how to make it quickly add the face into the database without spending a lot of time. So we designed a software and so this is one part of the page, how to add the people. So we are able to manage different lists. So we support up to 123 lists. And we are able to uh, support denied list, a low list and different group. So an example is of uh, facial recognition application is about residents. So uh, many residents has their own uh, guard at the entrance, but in some area they don't have this uh, abilities to hire a guy to do the, this management. So residents is one kind of example. So let's have a look of this diagram. So you can see I'm living in this house and uh, uh, we installed the uh, living camera at the entrance. So if I'm the guy living in the house, presenting to the camera, and of course I need my face into the database of the facial system, then the door connecting to the physical door with digital output will open the door. But in case, okay, let's say tomorrow is my birthday. I want to invite so many friends to come to my house to do party. So I invite them to come, so they will come, and they are not in the database. So once they're stand in front of the camera, then the, he's not recognized as a guest. So the guard, which is uh, usually at the entrance or in the lobby, will see the face and can use the SIP phone and talk to the guy using our door station. So our door station is a multi-purpose camera. Not only it has a video, it has a built-in speaker and microphone. So I can have two-way communication between the a security guard and the guest. So after the identity is verified, then I can use some combination on the SIP phone to open the door 
for the guy. So we can do what we say guest visit administration. So this is a, an example of what a lot of capabilities of the VM, Lilin VMS software. So we can do different kind of action for different kind of source. So on the left side is the different kind of source we support. We support motion, we support uh, video laws, uh, NPRs, many functions. And we, on the right side, you can support different kind of alarm. So in this example, I'm using uh, one camera that has a physical digital output. And then I can say, okay, if somebody is present at this camera, then trigger this uh, uh, digital output for 10 seconds, and which means the door will open. Second example I want to uh, introduce you is about hospital hand-free solution. Because when you go to hospital, bacteria, all this stuff, they, they survive everywhere. Uh, now COVID-19, I heard the bacteria can survive 48 hours in the, in the, on the floor. So it's very dangerous area. So how to avoid and how to use Lilin solution to uh, make their job easier, especially when I see in the USA, the nurses keep working 24 hours and they have no rest. So we have to find a solution to solve this solution. So using the same architecture, we can using the facial recognition to say, okay, this nurse can go to a specific area and the door will open once he comes to the area. And the good thing is because you not only necessarily need a camera just in the face, you can use dome camera installed on the ceiling. So we are able to manage uh, angle from the top to bottom. So not only just face to face uh, recognition. So it's very convenient because most of the hospital, and I mean, most of the building camera is installed on the ceiling, not in the wall. So we call it no contact. And one other example is called A use B identity to enter premise. Um, many times people, they want to use somebody identity to go some area, especially when it is sensitive area where there is maybe money or a company treasure like uh, archive or sensitive information or also uh, CPU sensor. So a lot of things that are very sensitive. So how to prevent this happen? So in, in this architecture, we are using a uh, car reader and combined with our leading camera and using the facial recognition system. So when a guest approach an entrance, so use based on this one guest, should, uh, one people ha should have his own card, like employee card, and he's able to go to specific area. So we are doing double verification uh, layer uh, security. So not only face recognition, but also access control management. So this is the page we designed for the access control. We want to make it very easy for our customer because you, everything is visual. So visual people you see on the left side is the picture from the access control database. On the right side is the picture taken from the facial recognition system. So in this scenario, my name is Alun. I have my own car and I go to the entrance. So I, I stand in front of the camera or a camera from the ceiling. And if I web the card, the system will do verification and match, uh, face matching uh, action. And if it find out that is the same person, then the windows stay in black. And in addition to this, the camera from another angle, like for example, we have a PTZ camera Using the IO control, we are able to say, this PTC camera can go to my direction and stop for 10 seconds. Because it's very important in some sensitive area, one camera is not enough. You need to have multiple camera to have different angle. So in case there is an incident, you can see what happened during when I came to the entrance. And also in addition to this, I can say to my VMS software, which is maybe using 16 channel display, to switch to specific channel, put in a full screen. So this is good for security guard people. They don't have to do it manually, it's automatically. But in case I'm using uh, somebody else card and I want to enter an area which is not my area, the system will do comparison. So I, now it say, this is not, I'm not using John 
I am Alun and I'm using John Carr. So the system recognizes I'm Alun and compare. And in this case, the window will sh turn red. And this can do some other action. Same, camera will go to specific preset. The channel will go to single screen, maybe uh, 10 or 20 seconds. And this time can be customized up to you. And also I can add, ask the IO control box to turn a LED display or LED for 10 seconds, or I can connect a buzzer. So it, it creates an immediate action for the guard which is on site. And this is the access controls event search. So we are able to search all the event, past event with the snapshot inside. And the last one I want to introduce you is about uh, branch office management. So uh, we used to sell uh, our system in many um, uh, company that has branch office, that has multi-site management. So more like security company that has multi-site to, mo to monitors. So in this case, uh, let's say we have different branch. So we have N branch and every branch has uh, 1000 people. So in the architecture, uh, every branch has uh, its own uh, facial recognition server. And in the HQ, uh, there is another computer using uh, uh, a server which manage all the employee, uh, uh, employee uh, information. So the HQ knows every branch employee information. So let's say I want to go to the branch A. So I belonging to the branch A, so I can enter the branch A office. So this is no more scenario. My camera recognize me, I can enter. But what if somebody from other branch go to branch A? Maybe he has to join meetings or annual meetings. So in this case, the branch A uh, server will ask the HQ if the people is existing into the database. So it checks if this, it belongs to the company. If yes, then the people can enter the branch A. But in case there is a stranger, he tried to enter the, this, this branch, he's not recognized by the system. So in this case, we have two action. First one, he cannot enter, so you have to go. Second, the guard can manually add this guy into the uh, database list. So to make it belongs to a, a safe, safe list. So we are, we are not only live recognition by using Cyberlink uh, engine we are, can do, but we can also do face playback capabilities because it's very important. If you are able to search, you need to be able to search in different kind of way. So the first way is to use name search. So by using our VMS software, you are able to search specific name on specific channel and a specific time. So I, this is the playback interface of Lilian. So you can see it's very user friendly and on the right side you can see all the event happen. So a little bug, okay. And we have a new function interesting is called face trace search function. So this is in case uh, you want to search uh, somebody which is in, the, is in the database, but you would like to know where this guy has been entering from, maybe from the entrance, from the building, from the warehouse. So by providing one picture to the, our search uh, tools, he will list all the event and you can do the playback on this time. So this is one example, but the second example is more interesting is if there is unknown person, and this is good for mall, for uh, public area, where you are looking for somebody that is, has been considered as suspect, maybe there is an accident or there is a robbery. Robber so you, you provide picture to uh, the tool and the tool will search into the record how he entered the area. So this is very interesting. You don't know who, what's his name, but you have the picture. So this is like in a movie. You know, when you see the movie, you are able to do this, but now it comes to reality. You are able to do this. It's not just uh, mission impossible. This is mission possible. So in addition to this, we, we also do, because COVID-19 solution, uh, COVID-19 pandemic is terrible. Uh, I have many friends abroad. They are fighting to, some people lost their job. 
Some people, they have this uh, uh, temperature issue. So because of this, uh, Lilian designed uh, a temperature camera for the COVID-19 area. So we, it is a little small case and it's very small. It's very small. It's like size of my hand. And we are providing uh, double uh, lens solution using Ambellar chipset. So this is not, you can sell it everywhere because it's not banned by, by any government. So we are not using Chinese component inside. So we are able to provide a quick solution for our customer to do uh, temperature me measuring capabilities. And also it can be installed in the short distance. So we recommend 50 to 80 centimeter distance. And we also support uh, PoE and DC 12 volt. And we are able to do some action like a small event or multiple alarm output. So this is an example of uh, uh, what we want to prevent because before you have to have a guard to measure the camera, the people temperature, but we want to prevent this happen because maybe this one is positive, but you don't know it, but the guard is risking his life and sooner or later it will become positive. So how to prevent this? We can use our camera to replace this. And we also have solution. So we have different kind of combination. The first one is uh, combining our camera with a leading MVR, which has the POE built-in port. So you can use four camera combined with this MVR and you can show the temperature information and it shows lives. So you can do some quick monitoring and it's very easy to uh, operate. And doesn't need to have like uh, some, in some product, you have a thermal uh, camera. You need to have somebody to stand on the side 24 hours. But our system is automatically, it records the data and you can do the playback and search by temperature. And if there is an alert because it's exceeding 37 degrees, all is kept into the system. Another second solution is using the same camera, but using our uh, server that has the AI capabilities. So we are able to show if this person has a mask or doesn't have a mask, but temperature is exit 37 degrees. Sorry. And we are able to search by temperature or by event. And in the later, we will also support, uh, in, ad in addition to this, uh, facial recognition combined with mask. So, which means I'm alone, I have temperature issue, and also I don't have mask. So. This is, the, this is uh, what Lilin's uh, trend is going. So I would like to show you uh, one quick video of how our uh, cam uh, temperature camera is working. Please, wear a face mask. Please, wear a face mask. So to resume, uh, Lilin facial recognition can be used in multiple scenarios, including residence, access control, hospital and building. So we can do customized solution for our customer to make it very unique. So if you have any inquiries or uh, would like to know more about Lilin solution, you can contact uh, our different uh, branches uh, uh, information. So you can check on this here and different address. So uh, one again, I want to thank uh, Cyberlink that's invited us uh, 
uh, to share and for all you guys. So I really hope you guys first stay safe and wear a mask. Okay, so this is my time.